right now it is time to bring in someone who brings sunlight through the clouds and the rain, and that is Dr. Judy Workman, uh, who joins us, of course, on a Thursday morning right before we go to the Lakeville Journal. Uh, Judy is the co-author of the Serotonin Power Diet, serotoninpowerdiet.com, also author of Journal of a Duck Midwife, and the book before her voice was still, A Friendship in the Shadow of ALS. And we say good morning to the bright light of sunshine of Judy Werpen. Good morning. Good morning to you. What a marvelous introduction. Now can I go back to sleep? Yes. <laughs> No, but now, 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 now you have to be uh, bright, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and light, light-filled, and sunny. Clear, clearly, and be able to comp- compensate for the terrible weather. Well, actually, I'm talking about a rather dreary subject this morning, Great. Jill, <laughs> and and that is, what do you do when you call, as you must, you know, a uh, organization uh, or agency like the Social Security Administration or uh, or an airline uh, or some other place that you really need from which from whom you really need to get information or a form or change something, and you're told, as is unfortunately so often the case, due to a larger volume of calls, we are experiencing large, longer wait times than usual, never telling you what the usual is. And right now, and then you hear what the wait time will be. In my case, I was called an airline, and I was told it was between three and four hours. And then you're given the option of leaving your number, maybe, and being given a call back time, one hopes, while you're still awake or comatose from home being on hold. And, you know, if this were a unique event, you could sort of laugh it off and say, okay, well, it's, you know, something strange going on. But unfortunately, almost every time you call, and irregardless of the time of day or evening, you get the same message. And part of you says, well, why can't they hire more people to answer the phone? Or part of you says, is it really worth waiting? Or maybe uh, if you're lucky enough, you will get a call back if you do leave your number. And I was talking to a friend of mine who has been going through this daily for the last couple of months because her husband died. She has to get all sorts of, a year ago and in order to prepare her 2021 tax returns, she has to get forms from agencies that have not sent the forms to her in, in, in a timely fashion. And she tell, tells me every morning she wakes up with total dread at how she's going to be spending a good part of her day. And it occurred to me that, you know, this is a constant source of frustration in, unfortunately, lives that are already being uh, challenged with frustrations, you know, from COVID and everything that that has brought to our lives. And perhaps it's time to start thinking about how to really deal with this issue because it's just not going to go away unless we stop using telephones and everything is done electronically. And, uh, you know, it occurred to me that the... People who are putting on those messages um, telling you that you're going to be on hold really could be doing something about it themselves. Instead of playing music that can really drive you just as batty as being on hold itself, um, or the re- repetitive advertisements telling you to sign up for something or another when you really don't want to be on the phone at all, you know, maybe the, the um, people running these uh, phone messages could say to you, okay, um, you're going to be on hold for the next 45 minutes, but here are your options. You could listen to a podcast. You could listen to a short story that will be over in 45 minutes. You have a choice of your music, and here is the menu, and click, you know, one for classical and two for hip-hop or what have you. Or three, you can meditate. You will put you through some walking, med- talking, walking, talking meditations, and so you can sort of get into a sort of a blissful, calm state while you're on hold for the next 23 minutes. You know, it, it wouldn't be that hard. I mean, clearly, you can have computer games with more complexity than this kind of choice, and it would certainly help your mood and perhaps even make you more efficient when you're finally talking to somebody. Or you can decide, I'm going to be on hold, and so therefore I'm going to be doing all sorts of mindless tasks. It could be chopping vegetables for soup, or it could be balancing your checkbook, if that's something that you like to do. Um, or it could be, you know, dusting out, you know, or cleaning out a, a, your silverware drawer where all the crumbs have, you know, deposited themselves for the last um, two years. Or simply doing something, you know, at work that requires not an enormous amount of intellectual 
uh, focus, but something that you have to do anyway. And that way, because you're multitasking, um, you feel that you're really accomplishing something during this period in which your life is on hold. Uh, but I, I think that, it, it, in a sense, it's sort of a, a, it, it's an, a case study of, of how we deal with frustration, and it's not just being on hold. I mean, many times, you know, if you're a commuter, if you're just going through living in a place where there's really bad traffic, you know that you're going to be frustrated because there's bad traffic or the weather is terrible or there's an accident. And so instead of getting home in 25 minutes, you're getting home in two hours. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine who has to commute, well, 12 miles every day, but sometimes she says it's going to take her an hour and a half if something happens. And so she has tapes on in her car, and so she listens to books. And sometimes the books are so engaging, she doesn't really care how long it takes. So, you know, I, I think that instead of sort of being reactive, I think we have to be proactive to deal with this kind of frustration, because otherwise it sort of trickles down into other things, and by the time we get off hold, you know, we're, <laughs> we're, we're not really calm or relaxed, but we're more agitated than we were before we actually made the phone call. Right, and then you tend to end up with someone who has, uh, you know, not... Who can apologize for the, uh, the 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 boredom of your past uh, uh, period of time, but who then is going to need you to 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 sort it out is going to still require time, attention, and putting you back on hold f- four or five times. I had this with That's a right. far less then- uh, interesting or or necessary topic. Trying just try trying to get um, Frontier Communications to come and fix a piece of their equipment that. Uh, um, you know, that doesn't even belong to me and isn't even related to my account. Right. But there's no uh, option for that. That's right. right. And, and you when, 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 when you're told after you've been on hold, well, this is not the right person you should be speaking to. Exactly. How can you not be homicidal at that point? Yes. But it is ubiquitous. Yeah, no. and, and, you know, and and what, what really annoys me is when... They, you get the message, well, do to hire call volume. For two years, I've been hearing that same message. Yeah, no, no, the, but the whole thing, and I'm, I have to be careful not to use a bad word on the radio, the whole thing <laughs> is nonsense because that's one of those things. I, I, when, I go through life with my deer stalker hat, my magnifying glass, and a really nasty look in my eye. When there, th- This is something that can be fixed. That's right. And if it isn't being fixed, it means, you know, I'm sorry, then you're doing it on purpose. And if you're doing it on purpose, how is that customer service? Yes. You know, you know it's even worse, and I didn't mention that, but when you call, I've called my doctor's office. Oh. You know, if I rarely call. I call it something important. I have to listen to all sorts of menu options that I'm not really interested in or some general information about the hospital where my doctor's office is located, like, other than, gee, if this is something really important, press one. That never happens. Right. It, and that say, should be the you, first if, one. If you're an emergency call, 911, that's different. But, you know, you're never really given a menu option that gets you to the person you want to speak to when you have to speak to that person. Now, oh, my house is burning down. Well, have you heard about our latest fire insurance policy? No, 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 and that's exactly right, and that is all wrong. And the, the only thing that people should do about it is make, make noise and complain. That's right. And say, well, Sorry, we're, we're trying. Let's, let's hope it becomes a national movement, Jill. I'm there. Thank you very much, Dr. Dr. Judy Wortman, Food for Mood. And, of course, you can hear Judy uh, every Thursday morning here on Robin Hood Radio, uh, right before this week in the Lakeville Journal, also online, robinhoodradio.com. Click on On Demand. Click on Food for Mood with Dr. Judy Wortman.